through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 186. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're giving you our DVD rundown for the week of September 11th. Mm-hmm. That's a Tuesday. 9-11. Yeah. Never, never forget. forget. Never forget. Uh, sadly, I don't think there are any patriotic mm -mm. Um, I don't think you really or... want to put out a patriotic film unless it was like Zeitgeist what on 9-11. About... Yeah, I guess. And so. I don't know if that's Flight necessarily 80, patriotic. 93 or whatever. Yeah. Maybe. Eh. Yeah. Anyway, if we're, we're going to go. That's like a marketing ploy at that point. That's, yeah. I think people would not be okay with Probably not. I don't know. Anyway, there's nothing on here like that, yeah, so don't sadly. worry about it. Exactly. Nothing For... controversial. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> mm. we'll see about okay, that. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, first one we're going to talk about is Snow White and the Huntsman. Mm -hmm. Came out earlier this year. This has a Blu ray, DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. As you may or know. Some. Yeah. <laughs> the magic foursome. <laughs> uh, as you may remember, this is the one that put an end to, was it Rob Cry? Do they have a name? I, Robert Pattinson I, I, I try and not to Kristen Stewart? Pay attention to it. Anyway, <laughs> this yes. is the uh, reimagining of um, Snow White. Snow White mm -hmm. with Charlize Theron as the evil queen, Kristen yes. Stewart as Snow White, and they threw in a huntsman for good measure. Well, you have there's a huntsman he's, in the he's story. He's in the story, but he has a but, much like Chris Hemsworth, pretty, much more badass role this well, yes. time around, I believe. Yes. You know, because it's Chris Hemsworth, so why wouldn't you utilize him? As sure. A badass. You know, I I thought the film was okay. I thought the visual effects were enjoyable. Chris Hemsworth was good. Um, the dwarves are probably the highlight. Hmm. You know, if you're wondering um, what The Hobbit's going to be like, this is an example of why a badass dwarf they keep the dwarves almost entirely out of the trailers. Yeah, which yeah. I'm sure was meant to be a surprise. And Who would be surprised that there's dwarves in the Snow White story? It would be, because they're so awesome. Yes. And, you know, I personally like Charlize Theron, though a lot of people gave her shit for being a little over the top. Can't hmm. necessarily deny that. Her brother was the weirdo, if you ask me. Interesting. Don't remember a brother, brother in the story. Haven't read the source material, so it could be there. But, you know, in terms of the release, it's got, you know, uh, a feature ad about remaking the fairy tale, which I hmm. think is kind of cool. You know, it's, it's different, for yeah. sure, than the original. Uh, you know, it's got a whole bunch of featurettes about the citizens, quote-unquote citizens of the kingdom, you know, mm. about Snow White yes. and having Kristen Stewart take on that role, you know, Ravenna from Charlize Theron's perspective, the Huntsman and the Dwarves each have their own featurette discussing, you know, nice. their role in the whole th shebang. Sheboygan. And then they have um, one about the visual effects team, which I Very think cool. was one of the better things yeah. of the movie. The visual effects were very well done. That was the thing that had me the most well interested in it in the first place. Well, I mean, Rupert Sanders, the director, comes from a video game background, ah, so yes. it seemed like that's probably going to be his strongest that makes attribute coming yeah. in. So, you know, mm -hmm. nevertheless, you know, it covers all the different platforms. It's kind of an interesting film. If you like it, definitely seems worthwhile to pick up. You know, if you haven't checked it out at the very least come to scarecrow or whatever yeah. and rent it you know and if you hate robert pattinson and kristen stewart watch it just to know that it was involved in the breaking them up yes if you're mm. a sick dark-hearted bastard yes, like myself you, you are you it's probably the reason why you watch it right <laughs> probably <laughs> that'd probably be the only reason or it's on netflix instant because that's my yeah. go-to well it's gonna be a while before that. i know i know in terms of the films that greg eagerly is anticipating killer clowns from outer space blu-ray release with K, clowns with a K. play. Yes, K, 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 K. K. Yes, K, K. Clown. No, just two, just two Ks. No white supremacy. Even though you probably could make an interesting allegory about the clowns. <laughs> Tell us once again, what is your love of this movie? It's just so. It's it's just cheesy. Great. It's uh. It's it's basically like a really cheesy horror movie idea that someone actually cared enough to follow through on, mm -hmm. rather than half-assing. Like rather a bunch of stone people around one day, just like, dude, we should have a killer clown. I don't know, but yeah, rather than being like, oh, it's a killer clown, so it's a, cl a guy in a clown costume that still uses a chainsaw and axe and scares people. No, this is like, they have like, you know, big large mallets, they have mm. shadow creatures, making shadow puppets creatures, they have balloon animals, popcorn, cotton candy. I like the attention tent. to detail. A circus yeah. tent is their spaceship. I mean, it's... That's cool. And it's just really silly. It's a, it's got one of, also one of the best uh, exclamatory uh, profanities, which is whoop de god 
damn to do. That is pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> obviously we're, I'm sure, doing this in anticipation for the sequel coming in the next couple years, probably, I believe. Probably, yeah. I think no, so, I mean but... that we know yeah, the yeah. return of the Killer Yeah, I'm saying Pass probably Rush. the next couple yes. years. We don't know when. I believe it's like 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. from what I've heard. In terms of this specific release, like, it's cool that the movie's there, mm -hmm. but the special features kind of like they have Not the behind the scenes footage mm -hmm. and they have character concept feature which sounds cool that one sounds cool both of those are cool yeah but that's really it yeah like you that's would, you would pretty that light would put a little bit more into it for blu-ray but i would hope but yeah. i feel like a lot of blu-ray releases are like a lot of the early totally. dvd releases yeah, where they're just like right. get it on dvd who cares if it's got that cardboard cover and they very well this might be a reason why you might want to hold your horses mm, in terms yes. of getting is that when they get right before that return sequel there'll be something there probably will be a, yeah. a souped up There'll version. be merch. yeah so swag something to consider if you're a killer clown fan like you and aaron roden friend of the podcast are as well yeah Airray.net. So, that's right. Mm -hmm. Dash. dash da air. Air dash ray dot yes, net. Yes. Yeah. Just want to make sure we get them a little bit blue. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, though, we're going to go to a, uh, another um, passion piece, per, per se. Oh, yes. This time we're talking about uh, James Cameron. Mm, Big yes. fan of the Titanic. So much so that he actually made a documentary just about going to visit it called Ghosts of the Abyss. Is this the recent one? Or is this uh, 2003. This oh, okay. was shortly, I think it's like the one, four like, years or something okay, after yeah. uh, okay. Titanic. This isn't the thing you did like last, this year? No, okay. no, this is, yeah, he continues on his love. <laughs> well, actually, it might be. Um, I don't know. There's, okay. there's a couple things to talk Carry about. Carry on. You know, this is him, and I believe Bill Paxton was also involved yes. with it. And, you know, they're so interested in the Titanic because of the film project, mm -hmm. that they decided to, you know, actually, you know, do a documentary about going to visit the Titanic. And this awesome. one was originally an IMAX film. Oh. Um, it was a, there's a 60 minute one, you know, because that's usually how much those documentary uh -huh. IMAX films are. So that is in this version. This version has a 3D version of it, a, a 3D Blu ray version hmm. of it, a Blu ray version of it, and a DVD version of it, which is pretty cool. If there's anybody who's going to utilize the new technology, it's going to be James Cameron. Totally. So. totally. I mean, Avatar, yeah. case in point. Um, it not only has the original IMAX one that's 61 minutes, but it also has an expanded 92 minute version wow. here. Uh, it director's cut. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it has a making of featurette including unseen footage and interviews, which is cool. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they did tons oh, yeah. of stuff knowing James Cameron yeah. has interest in this, that I'm sure there's tons of stuff. This is just him opening the his library and letting out all that extra totally. stuff he's been sitting on. And they also have the ROV experience, which is a, a multi-angle feature of different camera angles taken during the dives. Mm. Uh, you know, was it? ROV is, I think, remote operated vehicle. Okay. So it's one of those little camera things that yes, they probably could like go from through. The abyss. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so that they could go through the Titanic mm -hmm. in those tight little crevices that yes. they couldn't otherwise check out. And, you know, I, uh, I mean, if there's anyone who's got a passion for this, it's James Cameron. And you True. know, this is going to be awesome. Yes. If you love the Titanic, uh, the ship, not the movie. This, <laughs> or maybe the movie as well. Or maybe the movie as well. You're not going to see any rows or the heart of the sea or whatever <laughs> it was here. Um, it's just, this is probably one of, probably I'd say the most famous shipwreck yes. of all time. I can't think of anything that tops I it. Agree. I mean, the scale of it, the, the mystery surrounding it, it's just a really neat story that it's it's True. cool to see a documentary sort of exploring yeah. the ship that's so far, like so remote to access that it's it's. And it's a neat it's companion challenge. piece to the film because yeah. it's the, you know, the true story rather than the fiction yeah. behind it. So totally. So we're going to wrap this up with a TV series. Mm -hmm. Throw those in from time to time. <laughs> this is one that I actually kind of enjoyed, but sadly never will really get. Uh, a wide following is because it? it's canceled I was already. Say, isn't it already canceled? And that is Terra Nova. That's the. Is this the Steven Spielberg uh, I one believe with the dinosaurs? Was, yes. 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 This is a story about you know a. I mean, this, there's some parallels with Fringe too here, mm. but um, <laughs> the story is essentially about some people in the future who okay. go back in time because they've just destroyed the world. They've been able to open a portal to sort of prehistoric times gotcha. before, you know, there's all this pollution and stuff. And now are they trying to get back to the future? No, okay. they're not trying to. They're actually, <laughs> they're they're taking people over in groups. 
I see. Um, because of the way the portal system works. I you know, see. they have to like pace it out. And they've set up this sort of like camp essentially there, led by the guy who was actually the bad guy in Avatar, if you remember that. Yes. Um, what's his name? Uh, Stephen Lang. Mm hmm. Actually, kind of a good guy in this one. But there's also sort of like a group that splintered off from the original camp that is trying to do something. It's unclear what their motivations I are. I think they're, I mean, they're, they're speculate or the camp with Stephen Lang claims are trying to bring military in, hmm. sort of take over. They're the creators. Others. Ex pretty much. Hmm. You no, know, pretty much. Hmm. And so there's this sort of like constant conflict going on between the two groups and dinosaurs and they're and and dinosaurs in the world <laughs> and they're, they've got different groups of people coming from the future and hmm. there are all sorts of different sort of uh question marks going interesting and i thought i thought it was kind of an interesting concept i don't necessarily think it was perfect as is but it's one of those shows that you know if you i feel like if you gave it a chance to evolve it might have been yep. something interesting gotcha. and, you know unfortunately yeah. being fox you know i think 13 episodes and you're done yeah. that's all you get so even with steven spielberg's names attached and it's dinosaurs mm -hmm. fucking dinosaurs how can i enjoy a, a, a show with dinosaurs not land of the lost like cheesy stuff i don't know spencer maybe because know. it's on fox and no one knew when to watch it probably probably or anyway because it was on fox that's our dvd rundown from the week of november 11th never or forget. september 11th Still never. I'm going two months ahead. Wow. Time flies, but not quite that fast. <laughs> and join us next time for a discussion of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes. Uh, you can find more information out at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Blip, Miro, Roku, Get Glue. And he didn't say get sticky, so that's a victory. But you did, so did, yeah. ha -ha, call back. Uh, Wah, wah. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.